All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're going to try to saturate two 10 gigabit connections on a DS1621 Plus using basically the NVMe SSDs. Under full disclosure, Synology sent me all of the Synology equipment in this video, basically for testing. I've got to send it back, unfortunately, but none of this I actually purchased and I do have to send back, but it's going to be unbiased as usual. And so the goal for this video is basically to be able to saturate two 10 gigabit streams at the exact same time, basically using the dual NICs on the 10 gigabit SFB Plus card that Synology sent me. And so before we start all of this, I'm basically gonna go over the hardware and then we'll go over the pretty simple setup I've done for this. And I have not tested this out yet. I've tested them independently and we're able to get about 1.05 to 1.1 gigabytes per second on my laptop as well as on my desktop. But I've yet to try them at the same time and I'm very excited to try that out. So all the hardware in this is Synology. I'll go ahead and open up DSM real quick and we can actually just go over and look at what is hooked up here. So if we go into storage manager, this is the DS1621 plus. And so that more powerful CPU will hopefully allow us to be able to send both streams at the exact same time, but I do not necessarily have the best hard drives for this. So if you look at hard drives, I've got three of the new Synology eight terabyte drives and I've thrown them in a RAID zero configuration because well, I've got to send this back. It doesn't matter if a disk fails or anything. I'm not putting any crit critical data on here and I've only got three of them but they're in a RAID zero configuration. And from previous testing, that got me about 600, 650 megabytes per second reading from, which for spinning rust is pretty good, but nowhere near saturating two gigabit connections. And so to do that, we have these two right here. These are two of Synology's M.2 NVMe drives, and they are very fast, and I'm really hoping they'll be able to. In my previous test, I was able to saturate one of these connections using this easily, super easily, like 1.1 gigabytes per second, which is honestly something I've not even seen on my free NAS all SSD build, which I'm kind of contemplating life right now with that. But these things are very, very, very fast. And so clearly the three drives will not be able to handle it, but I've got two of these NVMe drives in a basically SSD cache RAID zero array. And so, I have loaded both the test files on there and I've pulled a couple times to make sure they're fully loaded in cache because well, I wanna make sure we've got the best possible opportunity for this. And that's basically it for the drives. We can go through and see the SSD cache. We can see there's 167 gigabytes used. Those are from those test files. And you can see I've got a very high hit rate. Well, pretty high. I mean, the, I'll be honest with you, this thing doesn't, this graph to me means nothing. I've never found it to be that accurate. It's like always 100% or zero. Maybe if I had a bunch of people on my network, it would mean something, but I think that's why they're getting rid of it in DSM-7. And so yeah, that is basically the setup for the drives. So now the last thing to check out is the actual networking side of things. And as I said earlier, it's the dual SFP plus card from Synology. And so I've got this link aggregator right here with two 10 gigabit connections with jumbo frames enabled. And so everything is jumbo frames. My switch is jumbo frames, my laptop's jumbo frames, my desktop's jumbo frames, my Synology's jumbo frames. So everything is jumbo frames. So that is good. And these are all hooked up to my Unify switch. It is the Unify X16. I think that's the one. It's the one with uh, 16 or 12 SFP plus ports and four 10 gigabit RJ45 ports. And so that's what's hooked up here. The laptop and desktop are both on the RJ45 and the Synology is link aggregated on two of the SFP plus ports. And so that's my setup. It's pretty simple and I've not done any custom configurations with Samba. I actually have not even clicked on this tab yet of file services because it's automatically enabled. I literally have done no configuration whatsoever within SMB. And so we're gonna see if this will work. I do have a couple of doubts on whether or not this will work. I just am worried that a few things will go wrong, like maybe because we're both signed in with the same user on both machines that Synology will get confused or something like that. Or there's just so many things. I mean, it's two 10 gigabit connections all at the same time. Something I've had a lot of trouble getting close to on my FreeNAS build, but we're gonna go ahead and see if it's possible. Uh, my backup plan for this video is if this does not work, I'm going to get two SSDs and make a separate volume and basically use those in RAID 0 to saturate one of the 10 gig connections and then you use the NVMe SSD cache to saturate the other one. I hope it doesn't come to that, but I think it might. But that is my setup. 
what we're gonna do is basically just, I've got the same file copied in two different folders. And so that way I make sure there's not like a weird conflict where they're both looking at the same file, trying to copy and I don't know if SMB can really even handle that. And so I've got them in two separate folders, it's the same copy twice, and it's about 81 gigabytes. What I'm gonna do is basically just drag and drop via Finder on my laptop and my desktop, and we're going to see if that transfer works. I've got a timer here to see how long it takes. When I was able to do one, it happened about a minute and 20 seconds. I think like a minute and 21 seconds was the time that it took. And so I'm gonna start a timer, and then once that timer gets to like 30 seconds, I'm going to let go of both transfers, and hopefully they will both transfer at the exact same time, and we'll see some pretty crazy like two gigabytes per second transferred out of my NAS. All right, and so now let's set up, the, set up this test. So this is where I'm going to be lo uh, sending the file to. Then I'm just going to open up the, here's the 1621. I'm gonna open this guy up. And on, on my desktop, I'm going to use the subfile test. So I've got two different places. So I'm gonna transfer this file, and this is local on my machine. And on my laptop over here, I'm going to do the exact same transfer. All right, so we are basically all ready. I'll go ahead and open up Activity Monitor on both of these. Perfect. And there. I think this is all ready. We're on network there, network here. All right, so I've got the timer ready, and I'm going to probably start it at 10 seconds, assuming I can get everything ready in time. So I'm going to drag this here and this here. Okay. Try the timer. And so at 10 seconds. All right, so that took a minute to figure out, but at 40 seconds, I'm gonna release these at the same time, which is now. Okay, they're both moving. Okay. All right, and so from the looks of it, my laptop is being a lot slower than my desktop, which in the individual tests, that was not necessarily true. They were both saturating the one or the 10 gig connection. So I am slightly worried that the screen recording, because I don't have the most powerful CPU, is going to slow this down. The first one is finishing now. So that happened in a minute and 20 seconds, which is exactly how long it should have happened. But we still have a lot of time here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up my laptop and see the CPU. And eh, the CPU is not that bad. Eh, it's pretty heavy CPU wise. And SMB is a single threaded thing. So having one core basically too full, I think might be the reason why. Yeah, even though this transfer is completely done, we're still off and on only ever getting the one, gig, one gigabit per second transfer. So I think that's probably the biggest issue. Because if it was a NAS bottleneck, in theory, it should have finished as soon as it was done. So unfortunately, we might not be able to uh, see my laptop screen for this, but I guess you'll have to trust me, or maybe I'll throw up DSM or something and see the network speeds. And so yeah, that just finished. And so that took way longer than my previous test. That was three minutes and I think 12 seconds. So minus 40, that's, oh God. Whatever it is, that is slow. So that was about, about two minutes and 30 seconds, which is fast, but is very slow compared to what we should have been getting. That was like a one gigabit connection. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to have to stop the screen recording and I'll have to do one more test with it to see what happens. Um, so I've stopped, I'm gonna stop the laptop screen recording. I'm going to delete this video. I'm gonna do the same on my laptop and I don't know, maybe I'll, so to see, see what's going on then, what we'll do is we will have Synology up, possibly. Unfortunately, we don't have the laptop cam, but hey, that's what happens when you don't have powerful enough of a laptop. All right, so at the 10 second mark, I'm going to let go of both of these and we are going to see what the transfers end up being. All right, perfectly at the 10 minute, 10 second mark. All right, yeah, the laptop is absolutely flying through it now. I will, I guess I'll take a screenshot. 
Let's see what kind of thing we're getting. And DSM thinks we are transferring at very slow speeds, apparently. I'm going to take a screenshot here. Yeah, so DSM has decided we are transferring at ultra slow speeds, which don't make any sense, but we are flying. So right now my laptop says 1.1 gigabytes per second. My desktop says 900 gigabytes per second. Hopefully they should both be finishing relatively soon. My timer is 10 seconds behind because I did the 10 second mark. And we'll see it, if we get to like a minute and 40 seconds on this, so a minute and 30 seconds of actual transfer, if we can do that, I would be absolutely just like blown away because that's gonna be very, very fast. All right, so now that laptop's not screen recording, it is about to finish now, which was a minute and 30. And that finished. Okay, I accidentally hit the lap button instead. But a minute and 37 seconds, minus 10 seconds, because that was the start time. A minute and 27 seconds. Okay, so let's see how fast that was. So this is a 81.6 gigabyte file. And there were two of them. And we'll do it in megabytes per second. And so it transferred 60 seconds for the minute plus, and that was 27 seconds. All right, and I gotta be happy with that. That is about 1.9 gigabytes per second transferred across the network. Now, there was probably five seconds there that I could have shaved off theoretically between these two finishing at different times. Maybe the screen recording is even affecting this, but that is basically saturating two 10 gigabit connections at the exact same time. So I am really impressed. And that's really the thing about NVMe SSD caching is I don't have that many drives in this system. I've got three spinning Rust media. So that should not be able to saturate two 10 gigabit connections. It can't saturate one 10 gigabit connection. But what it does is it is just so fast that those NVMe drives can be read from ultra, ultra, ultra quickly. And so it makes having them actually speed up your sequential performance which is so different than how it was with SATA drives, where really SATA SSDs were all about, okay, they're really fast at random read and writes, but if you tried to throw a ton of sequential reads at them, well, it didn't really help because you probably only had one or two SSD caches, rather than the 10 spinning disks you had, where the 10 spinning disks basically could transfer way faster than the SSDs could. Now, because of the speed of NVMe, we were able to get 1.875 gigabytes per second transferred over the network. And I bet I could have done better with that if this was not screen recording, but hey, I am absolutely blown away by that result. All right, so that's this test. If you need to know, yes, you can definitely saturate two 10 gigabit connections on a DS1621 plus if you have a good card and you also have enough data in the SSD caches to be able to feed that performance. So in this case, for most people, I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you're 10 gigabit, the bottleneck is probably either gonna be the 10 gig card or the actual media you're writing and reading from. So that is an awesome result. All right, I'll go ahead and leave everything I use in this video in the comments below, there'll be Amazon affiliate links. And go ahead and put any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below or anything else you'd like me to test out on this DS1621 Plus before I send it back. All right, thanks for watching, have a good one, bye.